This video will cover the Geometry Common Core exam from August 2015, questions 16 through 21. Number 16 says that a hemispherical tank, now notice this says hemispherical, that's a half sphere, is filled with water. Being filled means that we're talking about the volume. And has a diameter of 10 feet. D equals 10. If the water weighs 62.4 pounds per cubic foot, what is the total weight of the water in a full tank to the nearest pound? So it looks like first we need to calculate the volume of this hemispherical tank. If you look at your reference sheet, you'll notice that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. But because we're talking about half of a sphere, a hemisphere, we need to divide that all by 2. And we're given the diameter, but we need to know the radius. And remember, the relationship between diameter and radius is that the radius is half of the diameter. So in this case, the radius is 5. So I'm going to plug in. We have 4 thirds pi times 5 cubed all over 2. So if this were me, what I would do is type in this whole top part in my calculator. Then divide it by 2. So go ahead and take a second to do that, and then we'll talk about what the answer should be. So for the numerator, I found 523.59877, keeps going, all divided by 2. So when we divide by 2, we end up getting 261.7993, and it keeps going. But remember that this is feet cubed, because our diameter was in feet, which means that this whole calculation comes out to be feet cubed, or in terms of feet. So we're asked what it is to the nearest pound, though, which means we need to think about pounds in terms of feet cubed or cubic feet. If we set up a proportion, it's nice and easy to solve here. So we have 62.4 pounds for every one cubic foot, which is equal to some number of pounds, say x, over our 261.7993 cubic feet. When we cross multiply, we just get x equals whatever the multiplication of 62.4 and 261.7993. So I'm going to multiply them. And we find that we get 16336.281. So now when we round to the nearest pound, that means no decimals. So I can look at here at the 2, or I'm sorry, at the 6, look to the right, and that's telling me to keep it. So just chop off the decimal, giving us choice 1. Number 17 says in the diagram below, triangle ABC is similar to triangle ADE. So this huge triangle ABC, I'm going to draw it kind of small, is similar to triangle ADE. So what we know is that angles are congruent, in similar triangles, angles are congruent, but sides are in proportion. And so our choices here say which measurements are justified by the similarity. AD equals 3, AB equals 6, AE equals 4, and AC equals 12. And all of this might seem a little foreign to you, or you're just not sure why they're telling you so many numbers, but what they're giving you is corresponding sides. AB corresponds with AD and AE corresponds with AC. So what you have to do here is actually set up a bunch of proportions and solve them. 3 over 6 is possibly equal to 4 over 12. Now the way that I would solve this is cross multiply and see if both sides are the same. 6 times 4 is 24, but that's not equal to 12 times 3, which is 36. So choice 1 is not our answer. So I'm going to set up the next one. Notice that in each one of these, they talk about A, B, A, D, A, E, A, C. So I don't have to worry about the corresponding parts anymore. I'm just going to keep setting up those proportions. 5 over 8 equals sign question mark 7 over 10. Cross multiply. 
5 times 10 is 50, which is not equal to 56, 8 times 7. Then set up the next one, 3 over 9 equals sign question mark, 5 over 10. Cross multiply, 45 is not equal to 30, which means hopefully it's choice C. Otherwise we did something wrong, or choice 4, C, I don't know where C came from. 2 over 6 equals sign question mark, 5 over 15. 2 times 15 is 30. 6 times 5 is 30. 30 equals 30, of course. So here we have choice 4. Number 18 says triangle FGH is inscribed in circle O. The length of the radius of OH is 6 and FH is congruent to OG. What is the area of the sector formed by the angle FOH? Now before we can find the area of the sector, we have to know what the measure of angle FOH is. So I'm going to call this X. And I'm going to go back to mark up the diagram. OH is 6, but we also know that OG is congruent to FH. OG is actually a radius. And so is OF and OH. If all of these are radii, then that means they're all 6. And because OG was congruent to FH, if OG is 6, FH is 6. Which then tells me that this triangle, FOH, is equilateral, with all sides equal to 6. So that means that X, that angle FOH, must be... Well, we have three congruent sides, so that means three congruent angles. All three angles sum to 180, so that means the measure of angle X is 60 degrees. So I now know that X is 60, but that's not my answer. I'm not going to change that to radians either. I'm trying to find the area of the sector. Now, a sector is just like a pie slice, a piece of pie. And we want to find the area of it. So I'm trying to find the area of this piece of pie right here. Area of a sector is actually a formula that you have to memorize. But it's not so bad because what we do is we take the area of a circle, pi r squared, and we multiply it by a portion of the circle. We know that a circle has 360 degrees in it, but we want to take out only a portion of it. So I only want some degree measure out of 360. n is the number of degrees. Because that angle x or angle FOH was 60, my n is now 60. And then we have times pi r squared, but radius, remember, is 6. So what you can do is type this part into your calculator. 60 divided by 360, which gives you 1 over 6. Then we have pi, and of course you can type 6 squared in if you don't know that off the top of your head. We get 36. Notice that each of the answers actually have a pi in the answers. So I'm not going to ever type pi in the calculator for this particular question. So I need to know what 1 6 times 36 is. 1 6 of 36 is 6, with a pi attached. So we have choice 3 as our answer here. So the answers for this page we have are number 16 is 1, 17 is 4, 18 is 3. Number 19 says, as shown in the diagram below, A, B, and C, D intersect at E, and A, C is parallel to D, B. Given triangle AEC that is similar to triangle e, uh, BED, which equation is true? So because the triangles are similar, we know that the corresponding sides are in proportion. So when we set up proportions, it's very important that we are consistent in the way that we set up the proportion. So if we look at this first one, we have CE over DE. 
So that's great. We're going, it looks like big triangle over small triangle. Then we go EB. Now EB is coming from the small triangle. So if I go big over small, then I should go big over small on the right side, but it looks like they're already switching it. So I'm going to stop with choice one because they're not consistent. So then I look at choice two. Let me just see if I can erase these markings. Choice two starts with AE. So again, big triangle over BE, small triangle equals AC, ooh, that's good, big triangle again, over BD, small triangle. And they matched up the corresponding parts perfectly. So here we have big triangle over small triangle, big triangle over small triangle. So I think our choice is two. But let's see if they're consistent in any of the other ones to see if maybe we made a mistake. So in choice three we start with EC so big triangle over AE oh that's another big triangle okay so then we have BE hmm now if I start with EC I should then start with DE because EC corresponds with DE EC does not correspond with BE so I can't choose choice three because they're not being consistent. Then when I move to choice four, I have ED, let me erase my markings again, ED, small triangle, over EC, big triangle. And they do correspond, so we're okay so far. Then we go AC, but look at where AC is coming from. That's from the big triangle, over I don't even care what it's over because they weren't consistent. They didn't keep the small triangle on top. So choice four is not our answer, which means that we're back to choice two. Two is the solution for number 19. Number 20 says a triangle is dilated by a scale factor of three with the center of dilation at the origin. Which statement is true? I notice that the first two choices are talking about area and perimeter. So when I see problems like this, I love sketching a picture. Always start with a right triangle, say 3, 4, 5. 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple. It always works every single time for a right triangle, as long as there's a right angle. Then we are growing it by a scale factor of 3, which means multiply each side by 3. It's going to stay a right triangle because remember with dilation, we get triangles that are similar. And so then we have congruent angles. So right angle stays right angle. 3 times 3 gives me 9. 4 times 3 gives me 12. 5 times 3 gives me 15. So I'm going to actually take a second to calculate the area and the perimeter for each of these. Perimeter, of course, just means to add up the three sides. 4 plus 3 is 7 plus 5 more is 12. Over here we have 12 plus 9, which is 21 plus 15 more, which is 36. Then I think about area. Area, of course, is 1 half base times height. So my base 3 times my height 4 is 12, and then 1 half of that is 6. And for the big triangle, we have our base 9 times our height 12, which is 108, and then half of that which is 54. So looking at these, I notice that the perimeters are multiplied by 3. 12 times 3 gives me 36, just like my sides. So the perimeter is 3 times as large in the image as it is in the pre-image, which means that choice 2 is actually not the answer because it's talking about being 9 times as large. Then I notice that to go from one area to the other, I have to multiply by a scale factor of 9. That is our k squared, or our scale factor squared. Areas are, remember, in squared terms. Feet squared, inches squared, whatever it is, penny squared. Area is always squared. And so if we think about our scale factor, squaring that gives us 9. The area of the image is 9 times the area of the original. So the answer here is choice one.
If you look at choices three and four, neither of them actually makes sense because in a dilation, angles are congruent, not three times each other. And then slopes, if you dilate, notice that the slope of, say, this diagonal is congruent to the slope of this diagonal when I dilate. They are congruent to each other. They're never going to touch each other. They're never going to intersect each other. So choice one again for number 20. Number 21, again, so out of space here. Um, 21 says that the Great Pyramid of Giza was constructed as a regular pyramid with a square base. So I'm just going to try to sketch this real quick. Square base meaning all sides of the bottom are congruent. And it's a pyramid. So I'm going to bring each vertice from the square up to a single point. It was built with an approximate volume of 2,592,276 cubic meters and a height of 146.5 meters. What was the length of one side of its base to the nearest meter? We'll call this X. So if I label on my picture, I have X on all sides. I'm just going to label two of them, though. So here they talked about volume, and if you look at your reference sheet, volume of a pyramid is one-third big B H, where big B stands for the area of the base. So now we have one-third, I have to think about the area of the base times the height. If we think about our square base, we have X and X. Area of a square is length times width, so X times X. And it's equal to that crazy number, 2,592,276. Equals one-third, x times x condenses to x squared, times our height of 146.5. So our goal here is to figure out what x is. So I first need to get the x squared term by itself. So I'm going to divide this entire side by one-third times 146.5. Make sure that when you do this division, it's all in huge parentheses. Do the same thing to the other side. One-third times 146.5. All being divided on the right side, or the left side in this case. The right side cancels out. So now on the right, I just have x squared. Uh-oh, can't scroll up. x squared equals whatever that division gives me. So go ahead, take a second to type that in your calculator, pause the video while you do it, and then see if you get the same answer. Make sure that you've typed it in correctly. Okay, so I found that when I did this division right here, I got 53,084.15, And in order to get x by itself, I need to square root both sides. So I have x equals... When I type in square root of that number, we end up with 230.3999, it keeps going. But if we're asked to round to the nearest meter, that means cut off the decimals. If I look at my last place before the decimal, the ones place, look to the right, I get a 3. So that means keep the 0 the way it is. Don't round it up, keep it the way it is. So that leaves us with choice 4. So answers for this page are the following. Number 19 is choice 2, 20 is choice 1, and 21 is choice 4.